This is the second section of chapter eight on critical path analysis. And this section is about dummy activities. So what is a dummy activity? Well, a dummy activity is an arc drawn on an activity network. Um, and its sole purpose is just to show precedence. It's to show um, what activities are dependent on other activities. Now, dummy activity is not a real activity um, because actually nothing happens when we draw a dummy activity. Um, and what that means is it does not incur any cost or time. So what does a, a dummy activity look like and why would we need it? So let's consider this um, precedence table here and let's draw it out. So we start with activity A and B, they are not dependent on previous activities. So I will put A going here and B going here. Then we've got activity C, which is dependent on, on A and B. So let's put that in, see what happens. So let's put, this is number one. And um, actually we'll draw that slightly differently. Okay, so I've redrawn it so that they can both go into this node here. And then we get to activity C. But then we get to a problem. Activity B, or so activity D, is only dependent on A. Now D has to be joined either to this node or this node or to the end of C. It's not dependent on C, so it's not going to go here. If I put it here, this says that it's dependent on A and B. So this isn't going to work. I'm going to have to draw this a slightly different way. And this will happen when you've got two different activities dependent on the same activity, but not exactly the same. So C and D are both dependent on A, but C is dependent on another activity as well. So when this happens, we need to use a dummy activity. So we're going to redraw this again. But this time we're going to draw D first because it's only dependent on A. We can we can deal with that. So we're going to have activity A here. Activity B here. We can draw D dependent on A. That's not a problem. So we'll put D there. And what we're going to do, if we add C here, then you can see that C is dependent on B, but it also needs to be dependent on A. If I do this, if I draw a dotted line like this, with an arrow, this now makes C also dependent on A. Yeah, so I break away, I get this extra line that gives me that extra dependence. And that dotted line there, that's how we draw a dummy activity. So we, we get that when we've got this split dependence thing going on. So it may take one or two attempts for you to be able to draw your diagram to get it to work. But it's often helpful to pick the activity that only has one dependence and draw that on and add the other dependence with a dummy activity. So in this case, we put the diagram D dependent on A, C dependent not on A, but on B, and then added this extra dependence, which needs to be split off from D and add it in here. And this gives us uh, this diagram in this activity network or this table in activity network. Example four, draw an activity network for this precedence table, use exactly two dummies. And often questions will say how many dummies they want you to use. So you mean, we need to make sure we don't use any more than two. Now we can probably work out from the table why we need to. Let's have a look here. You see that activities E and F are both dependent on B, but F is also dependent on C. So We'll just circle that. We're going to get a dummy occur here. And then here as well, G and H are both dependent on D, but G is also dependent on F. So there's where the second dummy occurs. 
So let's start our table. So I can see that we start with activity A, that's not dependent on anything. So zero in my source node, activity A. And then I can see activities B, C and D are all dependent on A. So B, C, D, all dependent on A. So we'll tick them off as we do them. Now, whenever we get this split dependence thing, always do the one that is just dependent on one activity first. Then when we get to the other activity, we can add the, the dummy in. So activity E um, is preceded by B. So we're gonna put that in. So this will be my second note that I add, and I will put E here like this. So that one's done. But when I get to here, F is also dependent on B, so that's not a problem. I can put that in with a dummy, but I will put F dependent on C on my diagram. So F will go here like this. And to get the dependence on B as well, that's where I do the dummy. Okay, so we did E dependent on B or E coming out of B, F coming out of C, and then that made our dummy. And that may help us with the next one. So again, when we go through these, we'll take this one off. It's easier to do the one with one dependence first. So we'll do this first. We'll do H coming out of D. So this is going to be number four. And we will do H here. I might need to change the shape of my lines in a moment. So that one's done. Then we go back to this one here and we do G coming out of F, not D, because that's where we're going to add the dummy. So G comes out of F like this. So there's G here. And so this is the one that we, where we're going to add the dummy here between G and D. Okay, so there'll be a dummy there to get that dependence. So a dotted line here. And there's my second dummy, I'm not gonna need any more. So uh, we'll take that off. And then the last one is here. I is dependent on G and H. So I will put my sync node here. And then I'll just change the shape of my lines a bit. And this is going to be activity I. And sorry, that's not my sync mode. That's my sync mode uh, node. G needs to go into, or E needs to go into I. You don't just leave activities floating around. And every activity just needs to go into one sync node. So I'll have to try and redraw this as a straight line like this. So there's E. And then lastly, activity H needs to go into I. So we'll just redraw that a bit. So it goes here. And that will be my activity I. And then we can tick that off. So if you use this method of looking for where there's the joint precedence, pick the one that's only got one uh, activity preceding it, draw that one in. Then for the other one that shares dependence, you join the other letter and then the dummy will go here, the second letter that's repeated. So you should now be able to do exercise 8B, which is on pages 228 to 229 of the textbook.